Hi everyone. Welcome to another practical, uh, sorry, key moment in chess history. This is Rubinstein facing off against one of the most solid players from the time, Carl Schlechter. And in this position, Schlechter played the move rook to d8. So I'm just going to give you guys a little multiple choice in this position. If you look at the position, very, very symmetrical. Two bishops both look good for both sides. Uh, the pawn structure is basically identical. So I'm going to give you three multiple choice answers, and you're going to choose which one you like. First choice, uh, knight to f1. The idea of knight to f1 is simply that black's bishops are eyeing down on the white king's side, and there's a famous saying in chess, with a knight on f8, there's no mate. And therefore, this is, it works the other way around. Knight on f1, very hard for black to get any attack against the white king. So that's choice one, knight to f1. Choice two, while knight f1 looks like it may make some sense, um, it's a bit passive. If you look at this position, you immediately realize the squares on a5 and c5 are very weak. And therefore, I would play the move knight to b3 with the idea of simply jumping in to c5 and a5. That's choice number two. Choice number three, similar to knight b3. However, I think that this rook on the open d file is really annoying right now. I would play bishop to d4. First of all, you are eyeing the c5 square, and you have ideas like bishop to c5. And second of all, we may play knight to b3, knight c5 afterwards. And just slowly all of our pieces will combine to attack these weak squares and give white an advantage. So those are the three choices I give you. You should pause your video and figure out which of those three choices you would play. All right, I'm going to show you which of those choices is the best right now. Surprisingly, well, okay, most people, from a positional standpoint, the best move is almost certainly knight to b3 eyeing c5 and a5. This is the move that makes the most sense. However, the key of this puzzle is you have to also pay attention to your opponent's ideas and counterplay. Our opponent does have an attack, and after queen to d6, they're attacking h2, they're attacking d3, and basically white is lost. So knight b3 positionally good, tactically losing. So this is why tactics are important, along with positional play. Um, bishop to d4, Maybe looks tempting, but again, queen d6 is really annoying. Because if we take time and we play a move like knight f1, now e5, and if this bishop moves, we take the bishop on d3. In fact, the only move here is f4, but admittedly this is not fun because we've just weakened our e4 square. So believe it or not, the best move of all of these choices is the simple and passive looking knight to f1. Yeah, we're giving up our dreams of knight b3 to c5, but unfortunately, black's ideas matter too. And this queen d6 type idea was really annoying. And therefore, after you know, a few moves were made, and the game was agreed drawn. So you just had to be a little careful in this position. I thought it was a good example because it's really easy in chess to just look at all of your ideas, look at all of your opponent's weaknesses, and not... Remember that they can also do things to you. So thanks everyone for watching, and I will see you tomorrow with another game from this tournament. Bye-bye.